Okay. <clears throat> it's camera reporting in for VLCD number five. Um, today I woke up to a point eight zero loss. So my total to date is seven point four zero. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. And actually, I figured out why potentially my um, losses have dropped so quickly in the first week um, and that is because of good old ovulation. I am not ovulating yet but um, I'm the three to four days before ovulation right now and that presented a problem for me in the last round. So. You know, I'm kind of damned if I do and damned if I don't. Obviously, for most people, ovulation is about 14 days away from yours, from Tom. Um, for me, it's 12 to 14 days. So, um, it's a double-edged sword, that damn ovulation, because for an infertile girl, you love it. It's the best time of the month. But for an HCG girl... <laughs> who's sensitive to it, um, it hurts, you know, not physically, it just hurts because it affects your losses. And I was so excited because I thought that I had timed the cycle really good to avoid like Tom, my first, you know, to, to start by, which I think Dr. Simeon suggests to start as soon as your cycle is over, which is what I did. Um, but because I ovulate 12 days, at 12 days, well, I'm going to, I can tell it's going to be around cycle day 12, um, then that only left me less than a week in between finishing my um, cycle and starting ovulation. So ovulation is here, coming, whatever. It's um, already posing an issue for me. I'm still having losses, so I'm very happy about that. I'm not going to... Um, complain because a loss is a loss is a loss and so if anything I probably did myself a service in the sense that um, I might not be having like big huge losses but I'm still having losses whereas the last cycle during ovulation I just stalled I did I had like I think maybe the whole ovulation week I might have lost a pound or a little over a pound, so I, I haven't looked at my logs, but I know that that week was really rough for me um, because the scale just wasn't budging. So, so in one breath, I feel like, you know, it's maybe it's not so bad that it is during the first week because that's when we have the biggest losses. So, although I might not have these grandier losses, I am still having losses, and I and that makes me happy. And then after ovulation's over you know, hopefully I'll still continue to lose. So rather than going through a weak stall, I'll just go through, you know, lower losses, but still losses and then continue on. So I'm still ahead of where I was last cycle. I'm at 7.40. Like I said, last cycle, um, last round at this time, I was at 6.6. .6. So no, six point something, but I'm still ahead of the game basically. I think it was at 6.8. So I'm a little bit ahead still, which I'm happy for about. And um, and I guess we'll just see what the next few days brings um, in terms of you know what happens on the scale. But I just have to remind myself, and you might need to remind me, that it's temporary. You know, three more days hopefully and it'll happen and then it'll be done and over with. So it's just amazing to me. Like I can feel I mean, I have physical signs of ovulation, but I also feel it happen. Like, I feel everything going on down there, and it's just crazy. Um, my body is really sensitive to any of those type of cycle-related hormonal changes in my body. So, ultra-sensitive. Um, and I think since I had my surgery in December to remove the endo, that I, I feel it even more now it seems to be, or it could be because I've lost weight or because the HCG, I don't know. Um, so I got that going on. And then the other thing I have going on is major stress. And I think I've mentioned this, um, already that because I thought it was making me grind my teeth, but there's some stuff going on at work that is really stressing me out. And I, 
I'd like to say that I'm not a stressor, but I guess I do stress over some things, but for the most part, work has just been great. Like I have no complaints, things have been going well, I love my job, and the last few weeks some stuff has come up that I won't go into here just because it's, you guys probably won't even really care, it's just politics, but it's making me really unhappy to the point where my hair is falling out in clumps. Like, I'm so stressed out, my hair is coming out in clumps. And one of the things that I was bragging about with HCG is that my hair stopped falling out, which I thought was mostly, like, hormonal stuff going on. Um, but now that I'm on HCG and I'm stressed out and it's falling out in clumps, I'm starting to wonder if, if it isn't just directly stress-related, you know, when that happens. You know, I know part of it's cycle-related. I'll lose a little around... Um, Tom, my hair will fall out a little bit, which is fine, but it's not Tom, it's ovulation, and it's, I lost clumps of hair today in the shower, so I'm starting to think that that's absolutely stress-related, so I have to get my stress levels under control, and I know that the cortisol and the stress can affect my losses as well with HCG, so, you know, that and ovulation and everything else is probably just not helping me right now, and again, I'm grateful for what I have because it's not horrible by any means, it's moving the scales moving so so I got that going on and I have yoga today so I'm really going to try to center myself and come back to the here and now and stop worrying about the future or things that are out of my control and just really bring myself back into a place of surrender and calmness because that's where I do best so I will try to do that at yoga today and I mean even just before yoga and after with my breathing and not thinking about work and stuff like that so um, and then the last thing that I wanted to tell you about oh god what was the last thing I want to tell you about oh see Kim 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 what was it Oh, body fat percentage. Okay. Yesterday I went to the gym at work because we have a full-blown gym and we have a trainer guy there, whatever you want to call him. So he'll help you like, you know, with coming up with the workout routine and measuring body fat and this and that. So he has the handheld device there to measure your body fat. And um, I went there to measure mine because I didn't know how accurate I have the scale at home that measures body fat. Um, but it's just like, I think someone else was saying this, like if, if I gain a pound, it goes up a percent. If I lose a pound, it goes down a percent. I don't really think that it accommodates for water or anything. Gal might've been saying that. I'm not sure. So anyway, I used the handheld device cause I think HCG Chica, uh, uses that one and, and says it seems to be pretty accurate for her. So I went to the gym and would you not know that my body fat percentage is actually 6% lower on the handheld device than it is on my scale at home. At home it says I'm at 49 whopping percent, or 48%. Um, yeah, that is like crazy. But at work, it's at 42%. So I'm gonna just continue to measure through work now because I think that that's probably more accurate. And at some point I might go get a test done, but I clearly have a long ways to go um, losing body fat before I start doing those tests and want to get really accurate numbers and at some point you know I'm gonna try to get my body fat percentage pretty low um, when I'm done with the weight loss and I'm focused on working out and all that stuff I'll definitely switch gears at some point and really focus on that but right now I'm just you know most concerned with getting through these um, rounds and getting down into healthy ranges all across the board on the numbers so I'm nowhere near that right now clearly um, but every day I'm getting closer so that's all I got um, those are the three things I wanted to talk about ovulation body fat percentage stress and um, all the effects that it can have on your body don't underestimate it I'm telling you I am having some severe reactions but I'm gonna get it under control. I'm, I'm trying. I'm gonna try not to stress and, and just kind of roll with the punches here. Um, so, you guys, I hope you're all doing great. I hope you have a great weekend. It's Friday. I hope there's lots of good plans, great weather, great losses, great stabilizations, anything great that can happen to you. I hope it does. I hope it happens to you today and tomorrow and the next day because we deserve all great things. All right. Um, have a great weekend. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.